Guys, we just got off the plane here. We are in Whitehorse, Canada on the Alaskan Highway. I'm with my friend Andre, who's been a veteran of this area for how many how many years you've been up here? 17 now. 17 years, and he's giving me a little history lesson on what, what this is about up here, Whitehorse and the Yukon. This is the gold rush country, right? Absolutely, you're in history. You're driving back to history here. It, and that highway actually hasn't been a paved highway just recently started to be paved it's still the road so we, we flew up here from vancouver which is about a two and a half hour flight about as far as just to put it in perspective daytona florida up to uh new york city it's about that far and it took us two and a half maybe a little farther two and a half hours and when we were on the way up here we had a little mishap with the plane didn't didn't we andre uh, well they didn't uh, there was something hanging out the cargo door and knocked on the fuselage i don't know if you did hear that yeah it could have been a problem like it, so, it could have put a hole in the fuselage oh, for we sure. could have all died, so, so i instantly texted my buddy that's the pilot that there is an issue and he turned around and we had to fix that Guys, uh, just so you know, Andre's a pilot. He has an R-44. Describe your helicopter. Oh, it's an uh, ex-built helicopter down in Torrance, um, California. And it's the most worldwide, very, very popular in the U.S., the rest of the world. As a matter of fact, they sell more of the 44s than the entire competition combined. Wow. Pretty good. So you most probably have seen lots of them. So this beautiful country here, you were telling me the miners back in the, what, 1800s, 1700s? That was late, no, it was 1900s. Oh, it was 1900s, that yeah. recently? Well, it's not that long ago. And there still is a gold rush going on here. I, on, the, on, the pl same. on the plane over, guys, I was sitting next to a guy on the plane who had a gold, um, what do you call it, a gold mine or a gold, gold mine? He found a gold mine that he did the math, he said it's worth $30 billion, $31 billion, and it was like 12 I don't know how many ounces of gold, but it, it was like, it was like, I don't know, it was a lot of gold. And it's on a, it's on a long stretch of land. And he said he doesn't, can't harvest it all in his lifetime. He's gonna sell the rights to some big company that can do it. But this is still the, the gold rush is still alive and well here, isn't, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Just the technologies uh, changed. What the old prospectors they've been after the nuggets that you visually can see now. They have big and they can uh, harvest totally different. So. But there, 90% of the gold mines is still the same gold mines out of the gold rush that they've been mining at the time. Just different machines, different equipment, bigger operation, and a lot of um, publicly traded companies up here. So just getting here back then when there were no, air, no airplanes and no railroads to speak of, there was people would like die on the way up here, right? Oh, lots of them. They had to come on steep, steep boats from San Francisco up to Skagway, Alaska. Once they've been in Skagway, Alaska, the big journey starting, they had to uh, hike up the White Pass and they had to do 25 trips up the White Pass to bring in what they called the tons of good because the Canadians wanted to make sure that the people will not be starving on the way or freezing. So they had a list of what, they, what was required to, to pack and to bring along and that would take them 25 times going up, up and down that pass till they could enter into Canada. Then they still had a few days or weeks of hike to reach the Yukon River. And once they've been at the Yukon River, they could float down to um, Dawson City. Which is south of where we are now or north? No, actually it's north. It's northwest. It goes towards uh, Alaska. Hey guys, if you've been watching this channel, you watch the DNH videos, uh, the commercials where, where that the, the couple is up there and they buy all their camera equipment from DNH and they, they're in a city that has a population of 54. We are going to a much, much bigger city with a population of how many? 124? <laughs> and uh, 136 out of those 124 are drunk, and so it's okay. <laughs> so it's a very small uh, town in a place called Teslin on T-E-S-L-I-N, Yukon. If you want to Google it, it'll come up on a map. We flew from, I, I flew from Bradley International to Colorado to Vancouver, and then we did the connector flight from, Van I did a nice video of Vancouver, the city of Vancouver for you guys. I'll share that, you'll see that first. And then we flew from Vancouver up here to Whitehorse, almost almost had an, uh, we might have had to jump out of the plane with a parachute if it broke the fuselage, but we, we, we narrowly escaped the danger <laughs> and uh, they had to go back and fix the, the the plane the strap that was hanging out of the plane and banging on the plane and 
they refueled and we're running a little bit late, but it's it's definitely been an adventure just getting here. And Kenya was like back in the day before of airplanes where, where the guys had to like take horses up here and stuff and for, to, to uh, for the promise of riches. But those guys, they didn't, they didn't uh, have any Gore-Tex equipment and uh, whatever we have today. They had bison skin and stuff like uh, that, leather, and yeah. uh, they didn't have the, the um, snowmobile gear that, that, that we have now where <laughs> You, the, the snowmobile gear that you have now that I have for riding motorcycles, no matter, you can literally sleep in a snowbank and be fine. You yeah. won't even be cold. You have to unzip True. it after about a half an hour. True. It's The te technology's come so far. And look at the roads. I mean, this is, when I hear of the Alaskan Highway, I had this vision of like this crotchety old dirt road, you know, going up through Alaska. This is a, literally a, a highway. I mean, yeah. you could you could drive a, a tractor trailer or a bus down here, no problem. Well, when we came to the country a couple of years ago or so, most of the highway was still gravel. So they this really, was gravel right here. Oh yeah. Wow, 17 years ago. Yeah, they uh, work in hard. And actually, north from here towards Anchorage or Fairbanks, you're gonna still have a lot of gravel scratches in between, just because of uh, you know everything is on permafrost, and then you have those heaves, and it goes up and down and cracks. So it's quite difficult at places to build a highway in these kind of conditions. And depending on the winters, how the winters are, the roads gonna look like next summer. That's awesome. Yeah. What a, when we were the, the scenery that you see from the airplanes, unbelievable. So this is now the takeoff down to Skagway. And you'll see here. So Skagway is 158 clicks, 100 miles down yep, south yep, here, yep. and that's where all these prospectors came from. That's where they are now, or that's where they were? No, no, that's where they landed when they took the boat oh, okay. from San Francisco and had to come into Canada this way. So we should be coming back in the spring, and hopefully we'll get to take a uh, flight and record some aerial shots in Andre's or helicopter. How many people can fly in the R44? Four. four? Yeah, it's a four-seater. Christy, you're going to love it, honey. <laughs> this is uh, the, the sights and scenes up here. You know, I always tell people, get out, see the world, meet new people, uh, live your life because it go, life is short. And when you get a chance to do an adventure like this, carpe diem, seize the day, go for it. What kind of what kind of wildlife? Do you, uh, pause for a second. What kind of wildlife do you, well, you think we'll see up here? Here on the highway, you're uh, very likely to find some. I'm really gonna see some uh, bears. There are black bears. There are grizzly bears. The moose, caribous, um, and then of course you might see the odd wolf and the lynx. There's lots of wildlife around here. We hadn't even left the airport, and a red fox, the biggest one I ever seen was trotting across the street and was, wasn't was the least bit scared of us. It was uh, definitely um, not scared at all. So, so that's the Yukon River, fellas. Stuff dreams are made of right here. This is Marsh Lake here, and the, uh, the Yukon River runs through it? The Yukon River runs through it, yeah. Must be chock full of big trout and Oh, salmon and all kinds of yummy stuff. All of it, all of it. So the, here the salmon, it's um, the longest migration worldwide. So wow. They come through the Yukon River, actually right by our house in Tesla. No way, really? <laughs> the Wolf Lake, and this is the longest known migration wow. for uh, king, king salmon. It's over 2,000 miles. That they They're migrate. nice and lean and just solid, solid. Well, actually, Fresh no, meat by the time they get there, huh? It's the opposite. Oh, they you get know? fat? Yeah, no, 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 but they turn red and, and because they're gonna die. That's oh my different, God. very different from the East Coast. The East Coast, the salmon, they go up river, they spawn, and then they go back into the ocean. Here in West Coast, all the salmon, they go up river and they spam and they die. Oh no. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and the and the bear, the bears eat them all, right? Oh, the bears, they have a They get their time, winter yeah. fat. Yeah. It's beautiful. Right? Just, you know, flying in the plane, I saw some of the most beautiful geography I've ever seen and talked to several people on the plane who came here briefly and ended up staying forever. They're like, be careful, you'll fall in love with the place. <laughs> and that's what happened to you, Andre. Exactly what happened to us. It's just... Uh, you, t tell, tell the viewers your history. Like, uh, you were born and raised overseas in Switzerland. Yeah, born Switzerland. and raised in Switzerland. Uh, always be a ski, ski bomb. Skiing broke me over. That's where I ended up. You came here and fell in love with the place and ended up 
moving over here. Yeah, well, part time at least. Part time. You're, you're, you're how many months in Switzerland? Well, and around six months here in Canada, and about four months in Switzerland, about two months uh, anywhere else traveling. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a good life. I don't know it's if you guys can place. pick up how beautiful the scenery is, but it's like something out of a postcard, man. Well, and the, if you go up further north, you have more red now this time of the year, and it becomes really magic. It's just beautiful. Sort of, but I'm not. Guys, this is Tesla Lake here. You said it's 100 miles long? 100 miles. It goes into British Columbia. Um, so we're in the Yukon Territory. That lake goes down to BC. 100 miles long. That's the only few cabins here that's on that lake. So if you ever want to go fishing, you'll be all by yourself on some long. The trouts in here are unreal. And the pikes and the graylings, salmon, everything. So it's a hundred mile long lake and um, there's no people on it? Yeah, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> fishing up here is phenomenal. Oh man, I gotta come I gotta come do some fishing. How's yeah. it? Uh, good swimming too, I bet you. Oh, you it's swimming yeah, it's a little on the cold side. The kids like it though, but it's a little bit on the cold side. So this is Teslin uh, Yukon. It's a native village really. It's a... Uh, Wow. Built here or something. We're gonna drive into do you the use that airstrip at all? Or, or I do use it sometimes, and I have friends that come to visit so they can land here and I'll pick them up. You don't need an airstrip with a helicopter, no. right? That's the beauty of it, right? Uh, you go anywhere you want. The best part hey guys, in addition ever. to get my tractor trailer license, uh, I might be uh, rekindling my, my, my passion for ultralight airplanes. Is something I don't think I ever shared with you guys but that I had a learner's prep for ultralight. I had a dream a long time ago and a goal to get a helicopter, and Andre's got one. He's gonna when we come up next summer or spring, he's gonna take me up in his helicopter. Who knows? Maybe I'll get a helicopter. That would be you that'd be should. a cool thing. You would love it. Or at least at least get to get a school. School. You can go to. Yeah, you go. To a lot of fun, and uh, after 50 hours, you can do your private pilot's license, which is really easy to do. I wow. Think. Is it is it hard to learn how to ride a? You will just love it. It's like a bicycle. Once you can drive it, fly it, ride you fly it, it then. Uh, yeah. There is no magic to it. 